Through the Pokemon franchise, Game Freak left a lasting legacy in the video game industry and the entire world by creating the first game to become a true multimedia sensation. In the late 1990s, no other gaming series was more beloved than Game Freak's Pokemon, as shown by its sales. Game Freak became an industry leader by bringing about a new generation of video games that bridged the gap between other mediums such as a trading card game, television series, and merchandise, creating the ideal example of these new cross-medium video games through Pokemon. In 1982, Satoshi Tajiri and a group of his friends decided to write a gaming magazine that would appeal to them, filling it with tips and tricks for the latest video games. They named this magazine Game Freak and thus began a journey in which they would become one of the most successful video game developers in history. While writing this magazine, Tajiri became dissatisfied with the quality of games being released and decided he could create better games. In 1987, Tajiri co-developed his first game for the Nintendo Entertainment System with the studio Kid. This game was called Quinty in Japan and Mendel Palace in the United States. After his success with Quinty, Tajiri formed a game company of his own and named himself the CEO in 1989, dubbing it Game Freak Inc. In 1990, Tajiri came across the Nintendo Game Boy Link Cable, a device that allowed players to connect their Game Boys and play the same game together. When he first saw this cable, he was inspired with a new idea saying I thought of actual living organisms moving back and forth across the cable. Later that year, Nintendo approached Tajiri by creating a new game. Tajiri wanted to make a new style of game where players could collect and trade creatures with their friends, to allow kids to experience the joy he had as a kid collecting insects. Nintendo approved the concept on the condition that Tajiri incorporate some sort of battling element to the game. The game was given the tentative title Capsule Monsters. Development took six years and nearly bankrupted Game Freak. Towards the end of development, Tajiri had to live at his parents' expense as he could not afford to pay himself and was barely able to pay his employees, leading five to quit over the course of development. In 1996, the newly named Pocket Monsters was ready for market. In 1996, Pocket Monsters Green and Pocket Monsters Red were released in Japan. In total, the games contained 150 creatures called Pokemon and encouraged players to collect them all. Each game contained 10 exclusive creatures, which encouraged trading between the games. Soon, the games were nicknamed Pokemon and started gaining popularity. In the first three months, the games had already sold 3 million copies. Soon, an animated Japanese TV show, a Japanese comic book, a trading card game, and various toys were released to capitalize on Pokemon's popularity. By 1998, Pokemon was so successful that a separate company was created to handle the Pokemon brand, simply called the Pokemon Company. In 1998, Nintendo decided to bring the Pokemon franchise to the United States, releasing two games, Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. They aired 52 episodes of the TV show in the US, released a trading card game and a multitude of toys and other related items. Game Freak capitalized on the success of the TV show, developing Pokemon Yellow, which followed the storyline of the TV show and started players off with Pikachu, the main character from the show. Pokemon was a worldwide success, causing many to call it Pokemania. Soon, Pokemon the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back, was released in the United States, becoming the highest grossing anime movie film in North America. By 1999, Pokemon had established itself as one of the biggest video game franchises yet. Since the release of the original Pokemon games, Game Freak has enjoyed continued success. In total, Game Freak has developed 26 Pokemon games across 6 different generations of Pokemon. New generation begins whenever a new set of Pokemon are created. In total, Game Freak's Pokemon games have sold over 1.8 billion copies worldwide. By 2013, the entire Pokemon franchise had earned roughly $50 billion in global revenue. Pokemon established itself as a leading cross-platform franchise during the late 1990s, when it led the video game industry into a new wave of games that crossed into other mediums. 
These new games range from Digimon, which shares many similarities with the Pokemon franchise, to the recently released Sonic Boom. The basic template stems from releasing video games, a TV show, and various themed merchandise based off the series. While other companies have tried to replicate Game Freak's success, none have been nearly as successful. Joseph Tobin summarizes Pokemon's success with this quote from the book Pikachu's Global Adventure The Rise and Fall of Pokemon. Pokemon is the most successful computer game ever made, the top globally selling trading card game of all time, one of the most successful children's television programs that ever broadcast, the top grossing movie ever released in Japan, and among the top five earners in the history of films worldwide. The success of Pokemon as a video game series is second only to Super Mario in terms of copies sold. The Pokemon franchise as a whole has brought success to virtually all businesses affiliated with it. In Anne Allison's book, Millennial Monsters, she said this about the businesses working on the Pokemon franchise. All the major players have significantly raised their stock and stature. Nintendo, which had fallen to the third ranked gaming company, returned to the first place. Nintendo of America showed a 250% rise in profits in the year 1999 over 1998. Hasbro's returned to the second ranked toy company after Mattel. 4Kids Entertainment expanded 30 times in revenue thanks to Pokemon. Pokemon has made corporations more open to taking creative risks. During the 1990s, American toys that focused on tough and cool characters were typically the most successful. Therefore, many American companies were unwilling to take a risk with the Japanese-based Pokemon franchise. They thought that Pokemon's cuter characters would not be successful in the US, where kids were primarily focused on famed superheroes. The Pokemon games were not even going to be released in the US until the CEO of Nintendo of America realized how wildly popular the Pokemon games were in Japan, and insisted that they be released. With Pokemon's incredible success, it has proven that franchises can be cute and internationally successful. Game Freak's Pokemon has heavily influenced its dedicated fanbase. The games have caused some extreme fans to spend countless hours training for Pokemon tournaments like the annual World Championship held by the Pokemon Company. Many fans can even recite the names of all now more than 700 different Pokemon and their characteristics. The trading card game is so popular that a rare Pokemon trading card was put up for sale for $100,000 on eBay at one point. Pokemon was key to increasing interest in Japanese culture of young children of the millennial generation, inspiring many to study abroad in Japan and learn Japanese. Pokemon was one of the first video game franchises to successfully unite fans from all over the globe given their shared love of the series. As Anne Allison stated in reference to Pokemon, once dominated by the place, power, and capital of the United States, global culture is being increasingly influenced and shaped by Japanese entertainment products. When Satoshi Tajiri was working on Pocket Monsters, he probably never dreamt that it would unite players around the globe under one goal, catching them all. Through the Pokemon franchise, Game Freak led the video game industry into a new wave of video games focused on branching out into other mediums. No other gaming series could stand up to Pokemon in the late 1990s in terms of popularity, and few had such dedicated fans as Pokemon during its prime. Through Pokemon, Game Freak has left an incredible legacy for the video game industry and the entire world by showing that the multimedia sensation it created had the ability to unite people around the world. As Kubo Masakusa observed, there has never been a game that has spread so broadly around the world and gone beyond race, language, values, and religion. In the sense of its international commonness and the spectacular speed as well as breadth of its worldwide circulation, we could say that the phenomenon of Pokemon is unprecedented in human history.